Chronemics is the study of the role of time in communication. It is one of several subcategories to emerge out of the study of nonverbal communication. Other prominent subcategories include haptics, touch, kinesics, body movement, vocalics, paralanguage, and proxemics, the use of space. Topic: <laughs> Definition Thomas J. Bruneau of Radford University coined the term chronemics in the late 1970s to help define the function of time in human interaction. Chronemics can be briefly and generally defined as the study of human tempo as it related to human communication. More specifically, chronemics involves the study of both subjective and objective human tempos as they influence and are interdependent with human behavior. Further, chronemics involves the study of human communication as it relates to interdependent and integrated levels of time experiencing. Previously, these interdependent and integrated levels have been outlined and discussed as, biological time, psychological time, social time, and cultural time. A number of classification systems exist in the literature of time. However, such systems are not applied to human interaction directly. Chronemics can be defined as the interrelated observations and theories of man's use of time, the way in which one perceives and values time, structures time, and reacts to time frames communication. Time perception plays a large role in the nonverbal communication process. Time perceptions include punctuality, willingness to wait, and interactions. The use of time can affect lifestyle, daily agendas, speed of speech, movements, and how long people are willing to listen. Time can be used as an indicator of status. For example, in most companies the boss can interrupt progress to hold an impromptu meeting in the middle of the work day, yet the average worker would have to make an appointment to see the boss. The way in which different cultures perceive time can influence communication as well. Cultures are sometimes considered monochronic or polychronic. Topic monochronic time A monochronic time system means that things are done one at a time and time is segmented into precise, small units. Under this system, time is scheduled, arranged and managed. The United States considers itself a monochronic society. This perception came about during the industrial revolution, when factory life required the labor force to be on hand and in place at an appointed hour. Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 238. Many Americans like to think that to them, time is a precious resource not to be wasted or taken lightly. We buy time, save time, spend time and make time. Our time can be broken down into years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds and even milliseconds. We use time to structure both our daily lives and events that we are planning for the future. We have schedules that we must follow, appointments that we must go to at a certain time, classes that start and end at certain times, work schedules that start and end at certain times, and even our favorite TV shows, that start and end at a certain time. As communication scholar Edward T. Hall wrote regarding the American's viewpoint of time in the business world, the schedule is sacred. Hall says that for for monochronic cultures, such as the American culture, time is tangible and viewed as
as a commodity where time is money or time is wasted. The result of this perspective is that monochronic cultures place a paramount value on schedules, tasks, and getting the job done. These cultures are committed to regimented schedules and may view those who do not subscribe to the same perception of time as disrespectful, inefficient, or unreliable. Topic: Polychronic time. A polychronic time system is a system where several things can be done at once, and wider view of time is exhibited and time is perceived in large fluid sections. Examples of polychronic behaviors include, typing while answering telephones or taking notes while sitting participating in meetings. Polychronicity is in contrast to those who prefer monochronicity doing one thing at a time. Polychronic cultures are much less focused on the preciseness of accounting for each and every moment. As Raymond Cohen notes, polychronic cultures are more focused on tradition and relationships rather than on tasks a clear difference from their monochronic counterparts. Cohen notes that, "...traditional societies have all the time in the world. The arbitrary divisions of the clock face have little saliency in cultures grounded in the cycle of the seasons, the invariant pattern of rural life, community life, and the calendar of religious festivities." Cohen, 1997, p. 34. Polychronic culture is more focused on relationships, rather than watching the clock. Polychronic societies have no problem being late for an appointment if they are deeply focused on some work or in a meeting that ran past schedule, because the concept of time is fluid and can easily expand or contract as need be. As a result, polychronic cultures have a much less formal perception of time. They are not ruled by precise calendars and schedules. Rather, cultures that use the polychronic time system often schedule multiple appointments simultaneously so keeping on schedule is an impossibility. Topic measuring polychronicity Researchers have developed the following questionnaires to measure polychronicity, Inventory of Polychronic Values IPV, developed by Blue Dorn et al., 1999 which is a 10-item scale designed to assess the extent to which people in a culture prefer to be engaged in two or more tasks or events simultaneously and believe their preference as the best way to do things, Polychronic Attitude Index PI, developed by Kaufman Scarborough and Lindquist in 1991, which is a four-item scale measuring individual preference for polychronicity, in the following statements, I do not like to juggle several activities at the same time. People should not try to do many things at once. When I sit down at my desk, I work on one project at a time. I am comfortable doing several things at the same time. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Predictable patterns between cultures with differing time systems. Topic: <inaudible> Cross-cultural perspectives on time Conflicting attitudes between the monochronic and polychronic perceptions of time can interfere with cross-cultural relations, and similar challenges can occur within an otherwise assimilated culture. One example in the United States is the Hawaiian culture, which employs two time systems, Haole time and Hawaiian time. 
When you hear someone say, see you at 2 o'clock Howley time, they mean they will just that. Howley time is when the person will meet when they say they will meet. But if you were to hear someone say, I'll be there at 2 o'clock Hawaiian time, then something different is implied. Hawaiian time is very lax and it basically means when you get there. Nick Lewis Topic time orientations The way an individual perceives time and the role time plays in their lives is a learned perspective. As discussed by Alexander Gonzalez and Philip Zimbardo, every child learns a time perspective that is appropriate to the values and needs of his society. Guerrero, DeVito and Hecht, 1999, p. 227. There are four basic psychological time orientations, past timeline present future each orientation affects the structure, content, and urgency of communication Burgoon, 1989. The past orientation has a hard time developing the notion of elapsed time and these individuals often confuse present and past happenings as all in the same. People oriented with timeline cognitivity are often detail-oriented and think of everything in linear terms. These individuals also often have difficulty with comprehending multiple events at the same time. Individuals with a present orientation are mostly characterized as pleasure seekers who live for the moment and have a very low risk aversion. Those individuals who operate with future orientation are often thought of as being highly goal-oriented and focused on the broad picture. The use of time as a communicative channel can be a powerful, yet subtle, force in face-to-face -face interactions. Some of the more recognizable types of interaction that use time are, regulating interaction this is shown to aid in the orderly transition of conversational turn-taking. When the speaker is opening the floor for a response, they will pause. However, when no response is desired, the speaker will talk a faster pace with minimal pause. Capella, 1985, expressing intimacy as relationships become more intimate, certain changes are made to accommodate the new relationship status. Some of the changes that are made include lengthening the time spent on mutual gazes, increasing the amount of time doing tasks for or with the other person and planning for the future by making plans to spend more time together Patterson, 1990. Effect management The onset of powerful emotions can cause a stronger affect, ranging from joy to sorrow or even to embarrassment. Some of the behaviors associated with negative effects include decreased time of gaze and awkwardly long pauses during conversations. When this happens, it is common for the individuals to try and decrease any negative effects and subsequently strengthen positive effects Edelman and Iwawaki, 1987. Evoking emotion time can be used to evoke emotions in an interpersonal relationship by communicating the value of the relationship. For example, when someone who you have a close relationship with is late, you may not take it personally, especially if that is characteristic of them. However, if it is a meeting with a total stranger, their disrespect for the value of your time may be taken personally and could even cause you to display negative emotions if and when they do arrive for the meeting. Facilitating service and task goals Professional settings can sometimes give rise to interpersonal relations which are quite different from other normal interactions. For example, the societal norms that dictate minimal touch between strangers are clearly altered if one member of the dyad is a doctor, and the environment is that of a hospital examination room. <laughs> 
Topic: Time orientation and consumers. Time orientation has also revealed insights into how people react to advertising. Martin, Ganoth and Strong found that future-oriented consumers react most favorably to ads that feature a product to be released in the distant future and that highlight primary product attributes. In contrast, present-oriented consumers prefer near-future ads that highlight secondary product attributes. Consumer attitudes were mediated by the perceived usefulness of the attribute information. Culture and diplomacy Cultural roots Just as monochronic and polychronic cultures have different time perspectives, understanding the time orientation of a culture is critical to becoming better able to successfully handle diplomatic situations. Americans think they have, a future orientation. Hull indicates that for Americans, tomorrow is more important, and that they are oriented almost entirely toward the future." Cohen, 2004, p. 35. The future-focused orientation attributes to at least some of the concern that Americans have with "...addressing immediate issues and moving on to new challenges." Cohen, 2004, p. 35. On the other hand, many polychronic cultures have a past orientation toward time. These time perspectives are the seeds for communication clashes in diplomatic situations. Trade negotiators have observed that, "...American negotiators are generally more anxious for agreement because they are always in a hurry, and basically problem-solving oriented." Quote, in other words, they place a high value on resolving an issue quickly calling to mind the American catchphrase, Some solution is better than no solution. Cohen, 2004, p. 114. Similar observations have been made of Japanese-American relations. Noting the difference in time perceptions between the two countries, former ambassador to Tokyo, Mike Mansfield commented, We're too fast, they're too slow. Cohen, 2004, p. 118. Topic influence on global affairs Different perceptions of time across cultures can influence global communication. When writing about time perspective, Gonzalez and Zimbardo comment that there is no more powerful, pervasive influence on how individuals think and cultures interact than our different perspectives on time, the way we learn how we mentally partition time into past, present and future. Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999 p. 227 Depending upon where an individual is from, their perception of time might be that the clock rules the day or that we'll get there when we get there. Improving prospects for success in the global community requires understanding cultural differences, traditions and communication styles. The monochronic oriented approach to negotiations is direct, linear and rooted in the character characteristics that illustrate low-context tendencies. The low-context culture approaches diplomacy in a lawyerly, dispassionate fashion with a clear idea of acceptable outcomes and a plan for reaching them. Draft arguments would be prepared elaborating positions. 
a monochronic culture, more concerned with time, deadlines and schedules, tends to grow impatient and want to rush to close the deal. More polychronic oriented cultures come to diplomatic situations with no particular importance placed on time. Chronemics is one of the channels of nonverbal communication preferred by a high-context polychronic negotiator over verbal communication. The polychronic approach to negotiations will emphasize building trust between participants, forming coalitions, and finding consensus. High-context polychronic negotiators might be charged with emotion toward a subject thereby obscuring an otherwise obvious solution. Topic control of time in power relationships Time has a definite relationship to power. Though power most often refers to the ability to influence people Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 314, power is also related to dominance and status Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 315. For example, in the workplace, those in a leadership or management position treat time and, by virtue of position, have their time treated differently from those who are of a lower stature position. Anderson and Bowman have identified three specific examples of how chronemics and power converge in the workplace, waiting time, talk time and work time. Topic waiting time researchers Insel and Lindgren, Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 325, write that the act of making an individual of a lower stature wait as a sign of dominance. They note that one who is in the position to cause another to wait has power over him. To be kept waiting is to imply that one's time is less valuable than that of the one who imposes the wait. Topic talk time There is a direct correlation between the power of an individual in an organization and conversation. This includes both length of conversation, turn taking and who initiates and ends a conversation. Extensive research indicates that those with more power in an organization will speak more often and for a greater length of time. Meetings between superiors and subordinates provide an opportunity to illustrate this concept. A superior, regardless of whether or not they are running the actual meeting, lead discussions, ask questions and have the ability to speak for longer periods of time without interruption. Likewise, research shows that turn-taking is also influenced by power. Social psychologist Nancy Henley notes that subordinates are expected to yield to superiors and there is a cultural expectation that a subordinate will not interrupt a superior Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 326. The length of response follows the same pattern. While the superior can speak for as long as they want, the responses of the subordinate are shorter in length. Albert Morabian noted that deviation from this pattern led to negative perceptions of the subordinate by the superior. Beginning and ending a communication interaction in the workplace is also controlled by the higher status individual in an organization. The time and duration of the conversation are dictated by the higher status individual. Topic work time The time of high status individuals is perceived as valuable, and they control their own time. On the other hand, a subordinate with less power has their time controlled by a higher status individual and are in less control of their time, making them likely to report their time to a higher authority. 
Such practices are more associated with those in non-supervisory roles or in blue-collar rather than white-collar professions. Instead, as power and status in an organization increases, the flexibility of the work schedule also increases. For instance, while administrative professionals might keep a 9 to 5 work schedule, their superiors may keep less structured hours. This does not mean that the superior works less. They may work longer, but the structure of their work environment is not strictly dictated by the traditional work day. Instead, as Kohler and their associates note individuals who spend more time, especially spare time, to meetings, to committees, and to developing contacts, are more likely to be influential decision makers Guerrero, De Vito and Hecht, 1999, p. 327. A specific example of the way power is expressed through work time is scheduling. As Yakura and others have noted in research shared by Ballard and Seibold, scheduling reflects the extent to which the sequencing and duration of plans activities and events are formalized Ballard and Seibold, p. 6. Higher status individuals have very precise and formal schedules, indicating that their stature requires that they have specific blocks of time for specific meetings, projects and appointments. Lower status individuals however, may have less formalized schedules. Finally, the schedule and appointment calendar of the higher status individual will take precedence in determining where, when and the importance of a specific event or appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Associated theories Expectancy violations theory Developed by Judy Burgoon, expectancy violations theory EVT sees communication as the exchange of information which is high in relational content and can be used to violate the expectations of another which will be perceived as either positively or negatively depending on the liking between the two people. When our expectations are violated, we will respond in specific ways. If an act is unexpected and is assigned favorable interpretation, and it is evaluated positively, it will produce more favorable outcomes than an expected act with the same interpretation and evaluation. Topic interpersonal adaptation theory The interpersonal adaptation theory IAT, founded by Judy Burgoon, states that adaptation in interaction is responsive to the needs, expectations, and desires of communicators and affects how communicators position themselves in relation to one another and adapt to one another's communication. For example, they may match each other's behavior, synchronize the timing of behavior, or behave in dissimilar ways. It is also important to note that individuals bring to interactions certain requirements that reflect basic human needs, expectations about behavior based on social norms, and desires for interaction based on goals and personal preferences Burgoon, Stern and Dillman, 1995. See also African Time Paul Virilio